Squally's Quads and welcome back to another new video. Today we are taking a look at a sub $100 5 inch FPV build that didn't quite end how I hoped it would. Let's go. So first up we're going to have a quick look at the spec of the build and for the frame we went with a AliExpress Mark IV frame which has a striking similarity to the GEP RC Mark IV frame. It comes with motor protectors, arm protectors, and a camera mount for a HD camera as well as an antenna mount. These are injected molded. These are not actually 3D printed. Um, and while they look nice and good quality, obviously they're not gonna hold up as well as TPU would in a crash. So just bear that in mind, but ultimately we're doing this on a budget for people that don't necessarily have 3D printers and the likes. We went with a JHE MCU Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver. Uh, total price about $5 for that. Um, now this actually come and on the bag it specifically says that it's a beta FPV one. So I'm not sure if it's just a rebadged, I don't know, but it says J h e m c u and then underneath it it says beta fpv so take us that as you will i'm not quite sure what that means uh, for the camera we went with the best that money could buy we went with the cadex ratel 2 um which is the best by far analog fpv camera that came in at just over ten dollars the speedy b tx 800 vtx cost us about 12 to 13 dollars and then the flight controller and esc combo this was a bargain i've never seen a flight controller and esc so cheap it's the f4 v35 f4 v335 plus fly tower i don't know i don't know but basically it's a 60 amp apparently although we'll get into whether that's true or not later on down the line a 60 amp um, who is the manufacturer of this actually? Let's have a look because I actually don't know. YSIDO. And that cost about $22 for the flight controller and the ESC. Now, it's got micro SD, it doesn't have USB Type C. I, I will absolutely forgive that. It does have an SD card reader to log as much black box data as you would like. It's got plenty of UARTs to add GPS, ELRS, an analog VTX, a digital VTX, whatever you need to add, you can add it. A buzzer, the works, it's not an issue. Um, and it's a genuine bargain. But was it really a 60 amp ESC? I'm not convinced. Um, and then we, yeah, that was it, I think. Yeah. So we'll start with the build. And straight off the bat, I noticed that there was something. A little bit awry with the frame because if we look at the footage of the arm holes the motor holes on the arms we can see that they've been drilled with two independent drills and there's actually a lip in the middle where the two drill holes meet what this meant was that i could not get a screw through these holes to mount the motors so i had to bore out the holes myself not a particularly difficult or laborious task but it did give us a quick insight as to what may have caused the crash and fire that you saw at the start of this video. Now, I'm gonna go on record as saying, I got two flights with this quad, and if I'm completely honest with you, I think it was absolutely brilliant, and I would do it again in a heartbeat, but I would do things a little different. There's two things I would do a little different, and we'll come into that later on. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of build footage on the screen. Ultimately, it's it's a straightforward FPV build. You solder your motors in, you solder your receiver in, you solder your camera in, you solder your VTX in, you put it all together and away you go. Now, I can do a tutorial of how to put the frame together, how to, where you would wire each bit on each part of the flight controller, etc. I can do all that, that's not a problem. But this is just a bit of an overview of the build. 
and what we did. Now, what I would suggest is this is likely to attract and interest newbies more than most. And what I would recommend when you are buying any flight controller, before you actually start soldering anything on it, plug it into a USB port on your PC. Double check, go into Betaflight and double check that everything is working exactly how it should be. So make sure that your gyro is working, make sure that all your tabs are there, or your, basically just make sure that everything's working, everything moves as it should before you solder anything to it. Oh yes, of course, silly me, the motors. I went with the MEPS 2306 V2. Um, these, I was under the impression, was gonna cost about eight or nine dollars each when I was sent them by MEPS. It turns out subsequently that they're actually about $15 each. So, what I would recommend from the motor point of view to keep your build under 90 bucks or about, about 90 bucks, um, if you go with the MEPS Neons, they're, I think they're about nine bucks each. So you can get a full set for under 40 bucks, dead easy, not a problem. Um, and to be fair, the, the MEPS Neons are, I, I don't, I mean, they, they both fly very, very similar. The performance wise, you're probably not gonna tell a massive difference, but I actually prefer the look of the Neons to these 2306 Mark IIs. These 2306 Mark IIs are great, don't get me wrong, and they're nice and budget, and they'll do the job and there's no problems, but if I was to, to spec a build, especially on a budget, I would go with the MEPS Neons. Um, the other potential option is the Emacs Eco 2s. I'm not sure what they're coming at these days, but let me just double check. Yeah, so the Eco 2s for a set of four is 46 English pound, which I think is about 37 bucks. So I know as he sat there looking, he's just seen, oh no, you could get the, I'll put a link down below to, to different motor combos because there is the, the Velux version 3 as well, which I think will come in at around about the same price. But this, this build at this price is dead easy to achieve. It, it really isn't difficult. Um, it might be difficult stopping it and setting off. I know, no, no. Th th there's definitely two, well, there's definitely one reason why it happened. Um, and I'll definitely do it again, but I'm going to do it slightly differently. So we, we put all the parts together, we, we get it all ready. I've pro I'll provide a tune down below as well as to how I tuned this flight controller in beta flight because it flew stupendously well. In fact, let me just stop there one second. Let's roll the first flight video and I'll shut up for two or three minutes while you watch it. Let me know what you think. Okay, so that's flight number one, and I think we'll agree that for such a cheap drone, it flies and performs really, really well. 
Before we get into the real serious issue though, I just want to very quickly pause the video and thank our members. We've got Phil Anderson, we've got Not Here, we've got Han Solo, Dizzy Dean FPV, Mark Duplex, Only Drones and Barry Morgan FPV. Tiers start from just $1.99 a month. You'll get your name shared out in every one of these full length videos some behind the scenes photos and early access to videos i'm going to drop this video i am going to drop this video to members around about two or three days potentially a little bit longer before i drop it to the public so by the time that you've seen this if you're not a member the members will have already seen it commented on it and enjoyed it but if i haven't earned that from you yet that's absolutely fine but please do like comment share and subscribe to this video so that youtube will push it to more people who are interested now let's roll flight number two we'll cut to just the highlights rather than the full flight and we'll discuss what happens at the end So that was an intense fire, as you can see from the footage there. Now, I'm gonna put some footage on screen right now as to what the ESC flight controller and frame all look like. It's blown a motor, a capacitor, it's destroyed the ESC, it's destroyed the flight controller. The battery is absolutely fine. And I do wanna say as well, um, obviously I, I fly pizza batteries uh, from CNHL, they decided a few months ago to reach out to me and ask if I'd like to be sponsored by them. I, I agreed because that's the batteries I buy anyway. Um, they said I didn't have to put out a specific video praising them or, or scripting them or whatever. But I do just want to mention in this video, if you are going as a newbie or even as an experienced pilot to make this build, do not cheap out on the batteries. And I say that even though that CNHL are at the lower end of the cost and i will put an affiliate link down below to, to grab some because they are on sale for black friday at the moment they are the best batteries in fpv bar none despite the fire despite all the shorts the electrical sh the electrical shorts that was going on across the flight controller the esc the motors and everything else i've checked and checked and checked the battery and there's no problems with it i think that just is a testament to how good these things are I've been flying them since day one. My very first battery from December 2022 is a CNHL and is still being used today. So if you're looking for batteries, there's a link down below. I would recommend them above any other. So what caused the fire? Why did it happen? Which is the same question. And what can we do to prevent it from happening again? Now I touched earlier on in the video about the QC of this frame and the fact that the holes had not been drilled properly for the motor screws. Upon a closer inspection, it seems what may have happened is one side of the frame is about two millimeters thicker than the other. So I visually inspected one side of the frame and there's more than enough clearance for the ESC, not a problem. On the other side, it's a lot, lot closer. 
and you know I, i'm the person that's built it i'm the person who's responsible for it and if anything had have happened it would have been entirely on my shoulders i should have checked both sides i visually checked one side there was enough room stupidly i thought that the frame would be a universal thickness from one side to the other but when we are dealing with things that cost about six dollars including shipping including the extra parts i probably should have known better and just double checked it but it is what it is nobody got hurt nobody got injured no wildlife was injured and thankfully the grass that it landed in was wet it'd been raining for days prior and it even it, it had even been raining earlier on in the day for about six hours so thankfully where it landed it was completely sodden in the grass and the grass actually put the fire out which is quite a relief when i took my goggles off because it obviously browned out when i took my goggles off obviously the spotter told me that it was on fire even as i took my goggles off i could see smoke coming from it now by the time i got to it it had put itself out and, and like i say praise the lord for small mercies so i think that is potential one issue or one cause of why this fire happened i think the frame thickness on one side is thicker than it is on the other and then the other question that i would raise and that i'm not in any way shape or form pointing fingers but an esc and flight controller combo so cheap could it be that the esc isn't quite rated as high and I, again i'm not pointing fingers i'm just trying to decompress after such a potentially serious things happened to look at and to to consider how we move forward from here i would probably recommend spending a little bit extra we had the goal of, of building it for under 100 bucks and we had about 10 bucks spare so i think i probably could have bought a slightly better named esc would that have stopped this fire i don't think it would because i genuinely think the problem was actually caused if i'm honest by the frame being thicker on one side than the other however that's the details of why it happened what happened and how we deal with it in the future covered the question that we have to ask is would i recommend that you my viewers go out there and build the same spec quad and the answer is unequivocally yes and no don't buy this frame or if you do buy this frame make sure that you raise your esc up higher there are better frames that will cost you an extra five bucks which you won't have issues with the motor holes you won't have issues with frame thicknesses etc 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 by all means buy this frame it's cheap it's cheerful and it flies really really well just make sure that you raise your esc up and get ready to bore out your motor holes that said if i was to do this again and i think i actually will because i really enjoyed it my recommendation would be just get a slightly better frame i think the esc is probably not the cause if i'm if i'm complete honesty the more and more i look at it um but i would recommend you do it absolutely for 90 bucks i for two flights anyway had an incredibly well flying basher five inch fpv quad with brand new parts log on to facebook marketplace it's unlikely that you'll be able to buy a second hand one for that are the parts cheaper than a branded frame and a branded build yeah of course it is but in this day and age everybody's looking to save money i really enjoyed this build it was really fun i'm a bit gutted it ended how it ended but we've learned lessons and we'll move on and we'll learn for next time i'm going to leave links to all the parts in the description down below i would recommend you do it yourself but I would also recommend you just double check the frame thickness on both sides if you get the same frame or get a different frame if not. You've all been amazing. I've been Quads. Until next time, peace.